So I've decided to sell my Insta360 X3. And here's why. First off, I'm shooting on the Pocket 3 right now, and it's tracking me. If I move around, it's keeping me in frame, all that good stuff. And I feel like the Pocket 3 has kind of changed the game in general for most vlogging cameras, even some action cameras. So I want to kind of start off the video by saying that. After really thinking about it, and I really did give it a lot of thought, I came to the conclusion that I wasn't happy with the X3 and I realized that before the Pocket 3 was released. And then when the Pocket 3 came out, it just doesn't make any sense anymore to be keeping this camera and I'm gonna be putting it up for sale. So if you're interested in buying it, with all the accessories that I bought for it, the case, the cage, the mic adapter, the extra batteries, all that stuff, I'll have a link in the description below. So why am I selling it? So I think the biggest reason for me was the image quality. The Insta360 system is very good. And I'm not saying at all that like you shouldn't buy an Insta360 or if you bought one, it's no good and you should return it, none of that. It's just not the right camera for me. So number one was the image quality. I couldn't ever get the image to look good or decent. It was always very grainy. The reason why I bought the Insta360 X3 and now the Pocket 3 is because I want a camera that was a vlogging slash travel companion. Something I can take with me, shoot anytime I felt like it without having to take like a big old camera or all these expensive equipment and lenses and things like that and capture the moments or vlog for my YouTube channels or just capture those dad activities with my kids. So I thought the Insta360 X3 and the Insta360 in general, the platform would be a good idea, but I could never get over the image quality. And I'm not talking about pixel peeping or anything like that. I'm just talking about basic image quality. It was always grainy, even in direct sunlight. And yeah, I could get it to work. I could get it to look okay. And I can, you know, shoot and log and do whatever and color grade for a really long time and all that good stuff. But it was a lot of work and it wasn't reliable. It was really hard to like, figure out if you're actually getting a good image or not. And the 360 thing, which I think is the biggest selling point, because you can shoot first, reframe later, was not reliable. There was plenty of times when I imported everything into the app on my computer, reframed everything, exported, thought everything was good, brought it into Final Cut, and they were like in a cube format. And I don't remember pressing anything. Like I know I didn't because there's several videos, you know, to put it in that form. I know I reframed it and keyframed and all that stuff. And then I personally deleted the original files, which was bad on my part. I sh we should never do that. And then I lost everything. And a lot of family moments were lost on this camera. But besides that, anytime I was filming in low light, I just, I knew that I was gonna be disappointed. For example, we went on a Disney trip, California Adventure, for those of you guys that live in California, I'm sure you guys know, but it's the whole California uh, Oogie Boogie Bash or whatever Halloween thing that they do where they close off the park. And if you have the special event passes, you take your kids, you trick or treat. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. If you haven't done it, highly recommend it. I took the Insta360 with me and the footage is pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. Pocket 3 came out. When the Pocket 3 came out, within the first like day, two days of testing it, I instantly knew that it was the camera for me and the image quality was night and day. Image quality was a big one. And then it was also the Insta360 mode, right? The biggest selling point of the whole camera wasn't always reliable. And it was a lot of work to first edit that and then edit everything in Final Cut Pro to get the story all together. So it was kind of like double work, but I was willing to do it. I was willing to do it because it was, Nice to just shoot, turn on the camera and hit record and not worry about framing and then thinking about it later. So kind of a con. It was also the accessories. It wasn't 
external mic capable right out of the box. You had to buy things to kind of make it a little bit more professional, but it was a lot cheaper than the Pocket 3. But I also think the other biggest con for me was it's hard to understand what it's trying to be. It's this action camera, but it's also a vlogging camera and it can be a companion camera, but it doesn't really do a great job with any of those categories. It's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none, but it just didn't feel like it had a purpose. Let me give an example. So we know that the image quality isn't that great, low light's not that great, and you're gonna get a very like action camera look. So let's talk about that. It's sort of an action camera, but the lenses are very fragile and they scratch up very easily. And any dust, I mean, any camera that gets dust on their lenses, that's not a good thing. You wanna keep your lenses clean, but any little speck of dust ruins the image quality. So it's kind of fragile. Can you use it as an action camera? Absolutely, a lot of people do. Can you use the Pocket 3 as an action camera? You can, but not to the extent of the X3, because the X3 is waterproof. There's a lot of pros and cons. So it's not a bad system. But I really think if they improve on the image quality, then they probably have something really great on their hands. And yes, I know there's the one inch sensor model version, but I didn't see a big improvement. I just feel like it's not there yet. It's not the camera for me, but it's the camera for many other people out there. And if it is for you, then that's wonderful. And of course, the other thing about the Pocket 3, which is a huge advantage, is the fact that you have a mechanical gimbal. So not only do you get great stabilization, but you keep that great image quality. You don't have to worry about anything digital that's happening in the background. With the X3, it's all digital. So especially in low light, you're gonna see this really weird like warping image look that gives this very, I don't know, like panicked look, action camera look. So I just feel like for 90% of the stuff that I wanna do, regarding vlogging or just everyday usage where I don't want to take out my Sony and, you know, having a Sony a7S III, a cinema camera, a Canon R5 or the C70 or whatever, that's all great. But sometimes a small package like this, a pocket package with a great mic system that just works and gives you a good image is just great. And I don't have to worry about like the fuss of setup and all that stuff. So for 90% of what I want out of a companion camera, the Pocket 3 does it for me. I'm still playing with the Pocket 3. There are some pros and cons and I'll do an updated video. But for now, I'll be selling the X3 because I'm really happy with the Pocket 3. That's it for me guys. I hope you found this video informative and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care everybody. Yeah.